So let's talk about the relationship between a thinker and a doer, as if it's a married couple. Now let's say this married couple is in a building. The doer goes straight to the top floor without even thinking, they're just like, I'm going to the top. The thinker will start at the bottom because they want to analyze each floor, figuring everything out. Now, because this is going on, the doer might look down at the thinker and say, hey thinker, what's taking you so long? What's wrong with you? Like, let's get up here. The thinker will then make an impulsive decision to please the doer and go up three floors, which is going to be very uncomfortable for the thinker. Now that to the doer, who's looking down, the doer doesn't see the three floors that they've taken and really doesn't feel like there's been any progress. So the, the, the doer will be uh, less appreciative of what the thinker did, making the thinker feel even less rewarded and will then go back down to the bottom where they're comfortable. Now reverse the scenario, the thinker might scream up to the doer saying, get back down here, slow down. Now the doer might come down three floors, but to the thinker, they don't see those three, three floors. They still see the doer being impulsively high. And so they might say something condescending or, or unappreciative, and the doer then won't feel appreciated, and the doer will then go back to where they're comfortable at the top. And so often in relationships, it's not that one is better, one is worse, it's that the perception of each thinker, feeler, doer is just so different that it's hard to comprehend one another without actually understanding the entire processor of the thinker, feeler, or doer. That's why we spend so much time understanding these three temperaments so that you can understand what is the doer doing up there? Why are they there? What is the thinker doing down there? Why are they processing? What are they processing? So that is just one good scenario between a thinker and a doer.